Hi, I'm Alan Bresnik from Light Reading. I'm here in Philadelphia at SETE Cable Tech Expo. We're at the Harmonic booth and we're talking to Asaf Metayao. Hi, Asaf. Good morning. How Good are morning. you? All right. We're going to talk about cable OS, but first I want to ask you some things about software and virtualization. Sure. Is the cable industry ready for software and virtualization? Absolutely. There are many adjacent industries that have already taken virtualization to the next step data centers, VRANs, and the cable industry is just the next industry that is taking the power of Intel off-the-shelf servers and applying what was once done in hardware to a software platform. There are lots of benefits around this, and now that we've achieved the performance that we're showing at the show, I think not only is uh, software going to be the next big thing within the cable industry, but in many adjacent industries to continue going forward with that. It's going to be a huge transition from a hardware-based industry to a software-based industry. It is in some respects. There are a lot of benefits, but operationally there's a lot of commonality with the way things are done today. Mm -hmm. So operational familiarity is a big deal, but also when you take things into software, it gives you a lot of uh, flexibility and agility to orchestrate and, and, and uh, connect to existing tools while looking at ways to connect to future tools as well. So a lot of agility there uh, while giving folks a migration path from what's today available. Asaf, you mentioned some of the benefits already of going to software and virtualization. What are some of the other benefits of doing that? Sure. The biggest problem cable operators have generally is a low-tech problem. They run out of facility space. Right. Space and power, and, in, and obviously there's a cost associated with that, but there's also a time associated with that. Building facilities takes time, and it takes permits. Uh, with the software-based approach, you reduce the space and power uh, requirements. Facilities can be planned well ahead of time, and it's a sustainable approach uh, so that's one thing. So it's a high-tech problem uh, solution for a low-tech facility issue. Right. The other thing is about growth and scale. You could start off really small in a one-rack unit server, and you could grow capacity one rack unit at a time. So scalability is a, is a big deal. And lastly, there's a big agility. Uh, instead of waiting for FPGAs or silicon, you could have agile development and have software features. So your feature velocity is much faster, much quicker. You could react to things that you didn't know about uh, that's going to be required years in, uh, ahead from now, but you know that you have the future proofing by having things developed in software. Okay, interesting. Can you tell us even more about the space and power savings? Involved? Absolutely. So we're showing two approaches. Uh, while they're both being powered by cable OS servers, you want to be able to have a distributed architecture, a remote FI type of architecture, and also what today is uh, deployed in a cable network is a centralized architecture where CMTSs or CCAPs are in the existing head-ends and hubs. Right. The space and power savings are slightly different. Uh, when you go to the digital optics, you could save up to 90% when you take the RF out and put it out into the field, into the nodes. Yet, you connect it back to the same servers that power the centralized CMTSs or CCAPs that are, that are basically becoming file shelves. The density uh, in these file shelves really give you a space and power improvement of up to 7x. So, Great improvements in either direction and a great migration path regardless because they're all powered by software-based um, core doing all the processing of the data. So if you've been talking about all the benefits, can you tell us a little bit more about cable OS and how it differs from some of the software and virtualization approaches we're seeing from some other vendors here? Absolutely. Virtualization is a big term, and there are a lot of aspects to virtualization. There's the SDN, or software-defined network aspects of it, and there's the NFV aspects of it, network function virtualization. Right. So SDN has to do with orchestration and, and enabling the control plane to be uh, decoupled from the data plane. Um, what we're doing here is, of course, in that line of thought, but first we're doing an NFV, or a software-based implementation, which decouples the physical layer, which obviously it's a... It's a cable industry, so you have to connect to the RF somehow. Right. And taking all the layers above the physical layer, the data processing, the control processing, the management processing, all the Mac layers, all the DOCSIS functionality, and putting that in software. That allows us to have a great shared resource of processing across all those planes while having great uh, capacity in a full spectrum DOCSIS 3.1 uh, physical layer. So you get the boast of both worlds. Okay, I understand this stuff. So how does that compare with other virtualization approaches that some other vendors are trying in the cable industry? Sure, there, there are a variety of implementations that other uh, cable suppliers or, or vendors are, are putting out there. Uh, they're all in line with virtualization. What we're doing is we're taking not only uh, the control and management plane, right. but we're also taking the data plane. We're doing all the DOCSIS forwarding and packet processing and software. Mm -hmm. And that's a big distinction. There are other approaches which have all that data processing 
happening within the physical layer component out in the field. And they're also very um, uh, aligned with just a distributed approach. What we're showing here is actually uh, supporting both centralized and distributed uh, deployment approaches and architect architectures. We know that our customers have a large footprint and they're not going to migrate overnight from one approach to the other. And right. we want to give them the toolbox that allows them to succeed uh, with whatever migration approach they'd like to take. So you're trying to give them as many options as possible? We, we Absolutely. All the different cable operators also don't have the same uh, uh, same style of deployment within all their markets. So mm -hmm. you even have, within the operator, different requirements, and, and it's going to take time as, the, as they move forward with this. Asaf, how does Cable OS fit into Harmonic's overall corporate strategy? That's great. I mean, what we've been doing at Harmonic for the past few years is moving so software-based approaches on our video platforms, as well as investing and looking at it from a cable point of view. Recently, we've announced VOS Cloud and VOS 360, and, and those are just examples of things that we've done in parallel businesses within the same uh, company. Uh, and the expertise required to do software and virtualization is something that is, is, uh, is core to the DNA of Harmonic. Asaf, thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Sure.